know. Ellen's. Dad, for the eminent. I thank God that he found you worthy to go through that test. And he laid it on my heart. I haven't spoken to you at all. But God was just showing Friday and Saturday. Through that suffering, you're going to have something to be able to give away to others. See, God wants this church to be a church of sufferers. Why? Because there's people out there suffering like mad. Mm. And for us to have the empathy, the compassion, the truth, the healer in the suffering, we've got to suffer ourselves. I hadn't handled this lockdown too well. Many times. Sit there over the 20 months and watch the Premier come on, the Chief Health Guru come on and gives their reports. I've never spoken to the tally so much. <laughs> But I've never got an answer. No. <laughs> Only from the wife. <laughs> and we can think as you listen to that and you feed yourself on it. You step off the rock. These times we are living in. You know what? God's laid it on my heart. It's a training ground, son. You know what the, the thorn in the flesh means? <laughs> God saying to Paul through that. You need me, Paul. There's one in my flesh. I hope he keeps it there. I had my tears too. Daughter with cancer, she'd been placed under a cardiac specialist at the Peter Mac. And uh, took her in, she had uh, Hard echo tests, not last Monday, Monday before, we had to go back on the Wednesday. And all the radiation she had uh, when she had lymphoma cancer, she had so much radiation 
that's damaged our heart. They don't tell you that when they're doing the radiation. But it's damaged the elasticity of her heart. But I think Thank God. I watched her saw a photo of mother daughter on Facebook holding up drugs. giving the time for the guy to come and pick them up. Test. Tart. But you all trees in the garden, and God knows, what food do you acquire to make your soul? Loyal. When I suffer, <coughs> you can cry out to the Lord. There can be a blackness all around you. You can be tormented and tormented. But you still can call on the name of Jesus. Oh, people, the Lord wants this church. It's come to me millions of times to be that wide on the hill. Oh, you have a, a light, the source of that light, fire, the fuel. It burns, it burns the dry offers. But to be that light on the hill, we've got to yield. And that suffering. Can I just share a couple of verses? One Peter two twenty one. For to this you were called because Christ also suffered. For us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. It's inescapable. If you're a Christian, you're going to suffer. But how we need one another. One Peter four thirteen, but rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, yeah. that when His glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. Isn't it amazing? Our names were written in the book of life before time. God planned before time. His son would go to the cross and shed his blood on our behalf. But for a time, do we take it lightly? I want 
want to know them. I want to know them. I want to know them. What's it take to do that? Crush me, Lord. Crush me. My wants, my desires, my idea of how to do things. God wants to raise up a people here that will be before him asking with regard all things. You think Satan's going to stand by when he sees what's happening here? That he's going to stand by and not attack? But our Saviour, the Holy Spirit, leads us crying out for a people, a remnant that will take the truth to his people. All over the world, creation is waiting to hear what the Lord's got to say. What do we want? See, God says, come unto me, all you that are heavy laden. Come. But our part is, we choose, we respond, or we don't. The offer's there. You know, the greatness of a Christian man's power is according to his surrender to Christ. Amen. You know, he's a sovereign God. Oh, yes, we agreed with that until we got to suffer. What about our sovereignty, Lord? Huh? He's a sovereign God. He's the God of the earthquake. He's the God of the tsunami. He's the God of Auschwitz. How do we work that out in our head? Eric Wise, a, a devout Jew, was in Auschwitz, and this was with regard to suffering. <coughs> Rifles went missing in the camp. The SS Gestapo rounded up all the Jews. They had two men and a five-year-old boy. And they were to hang the three of them in front of all the Jewish interns. They mounted them all on a chair and kicked the chair from under them. The two older men died quickly, the young boy, because he's only five as weight. It didn't break his neck, so he hung there, struggling, struggling, struggling. Men crying out behind, screaming, where are you, God?
Estão aqui vindo da loja. Stephen signed. His father was a missionary. This fallen tribe that that made contact with his father was a pilot. He was only a little six-year-old boy. There were five missionaries. They landed. And the tribe hacked the whole lot of them to death. He said, my mother called me into the room and said that your daddy won't be coming home. He's gone to be with the Lord. He said, when he found out in later years talking to his auntie, she explained everything to him. And he said, I came to the point where he said, I accepted. God allowed that. He said God was present as my father was being hacked to death. And they said, how do you know that? And he said, look at Jesus. God allowed those men to arrest him. God allowed him to be killed on our behalf. Do we take it lightly? He's a sovereign God. But Stephen Saint said, you know, I used to go around quite often and speak at other churches about what happened with regard to my father and everything. And he said I used to come home and say to my wife, I can talk about it, but I haven't got that passion, what God feels towards his people. And I'm crying out, I want that passion. So he said, be careful what you pray for. He said, I got that passion, all right. He said, I hadn't seen my daughter. She was overseas, I think, doing a lot of work with YWAM. <coughs> she came home. And they threw a, had a function for her when she returned home. And his wife came and got hold of him that evening and said, oh, could you could come up to the daughter's bedroom? So he went up. And the daughter said to her father, would you please pray for me? I've got this headache. So him and his wife prayed for their daughter. It got worse, they rushed her to the hospital. And the hospital said, she's having a cerebral hemorrhage, there's nothing we can do for her. And she died.
He said, I learned about God's passion. It broke me. We don't want these things. We don't want to experience them. Man spends billions to escape suffering. Billions. Drugs, alcohol, feeding the flesh to escape suffering. Without it, folks, in conclusion, we've got nothing to give to others. Nothing. As we allow the Lord to take us through it, He implants and gives some to us something priceless to give away to others. Praise God.